Um, I, I think the vice chair is going to have to run the meeting there. Uh, just Trini won't be able to join us. Okay. Um, I, it's a personal issue. Uh, I, I believe the vice chair, Larry, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's call the meeting to order at 5.40 p.m. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Larry. Could you hang on one second? Let me just hit record so that we can start. Sure. Um, okay, now we're recording. All right. Um, we will begin the meeting at 5.40 p.m. We'll call the meeting to order. And the first item on our agenda is uh, public comment. Do we have public to be heard? Yeah, hi, this is Brendan Malley. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm, uh, I'm new to the town. I bought um, some property over on Route 14 as well. I work for a solar company in White River Junction called Norwich Technologies. And so I'm just here tonight um, to introduce a solar project that will uh, come before the select board, uh, most likely in the next meeting in a, under the regular agenda. Um, if you like, I can uh, just share a quick screen so everybody can see just generally where it's gonna be. Um, let me see if I can do that. Oh, it's disabled. So it's on the Gifford Farm um, over on 14. Um, and it's uh, on, a, on an open field that's uh, not visible uh, from the road. And um, it's what's called a, a a Vermont 500 kilowatt net metered solar array. So um, happy to take any questions now, but it will be something that'll likely be uh, up at the next meeting. Okay. Um, if if no one has any pressing questions, um, seems like that would be a, the appropriate time to discuss it further at the at the next meeting. Sure. Yep. I just wanted to say hello and and let you know who I am, who our company is, and, and that we'll be talking to you soon, and, um, and that it's a, you know, a pretty straightforward um, Vermont net metered project. Yeah. Larry, it's Pat. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, please do. Just curious, which Gifford farm? Is it the one with the Quonset hut or the one across the road? So uh, it's on the west side of 14, um, and... Uh, it's um, so as you go as you go north, it's on the west, and it's uh, a field that's just north of the houses. Uh, there's a little uh, farm road that curls up off and and, and into the field. Yep. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for Brendan? Okay. Well, sounds like we're good for now. I appreciate you joining us and giving us a heads up and we'll hopefully see you next month. Definitely. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Have, Thank have you. Good. I have something to say, if I may. Uh, yeah, Sally. Yes, I'm here for the representing the library to give you our monthly report and uh, tell you that the library is continuing its curbside service. We've we had a brief meeting yesterday. We are not ready to reopen the building, but curbside seems to have been working quite well. Um, on Monday at noon, having been postponed from, I don't remember when because of the virus, mm -hmm. there will be that mandatory site visit for contractors who are interested in bidding on that, on the ADA renovation of the downstairs bathroom. Mm -hmm. And Amy has, figured that there will be no more than 10 people. People, There'll be Amy, um, there'll be the architect and up to eight contractors. I think if there wind up being more, I don't think there are, but those could be phased in a different separate walkthrough. Anyway, everybody will be 10 feet apart, masks and all of that kind of stuff. So we're, it looks like we're gonna be able to go ahead with that and that's pretty exciting. Um, we got an extension on the grant, so I think we're covered. And then I wanted to let you know, if any of you haven't, don't know, that uh, the second library podcast was dropped last week, or dro posted, or whatever they do. And um, <laughs> I've heard it. I heard the first one as well. They're both really wonderful. If you haven't 
heard them, go to the library website and, and click on the link to the podcast. That's Kate Brandstetter. And the one, this most recent one was an interview with Dylan Kelly about being in Randolph and about working at the newspaper. And it's, it's pretty good. So I highly recommend it. So things are moving still at the library and uh, looks good. And that's about it. Thanks. Well, thank you, Sally. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna um, mute me again. Okay. Any other um, public comment? Okay. Just to confirm Sally's last name. Penrod. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to approval of the agenda. I'll move the approval of the agenda. I'm sorry, if I, if I may, uh, I was unmuting myself. If I may uh, request a change from the board, uh, we received a request from the East Valley Community Group um, that they, they had initially asked us to place the Wyndham Foundation grant under grants uh, and recently asked us to change that name for the Lamson Howell Foundation grant. Um, and if the, the board would approve, I could make that change. I don't see why not. Okay. I'll, I'll move that we approve the agenda with the change of Wyndham to Lenson Howell. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Move on to the consent calendar. Did we get minutes? Uh, minutes should have been in your packet. In the packet. They, they should have been. Um, they, they, I may have inadvertently. Uh, um, I, I didn't. Know. So no, it looks like I inadvertently left. I left off the minutes from your packet. Can we do those next time? We can. Yep. Yeah, we can. Uh, the board can choose to not approve them today and then just approve both today's minutes and last month's minutes at the next meeting. Okay. You need to make an motion, amendment to your motion for the consent calendar then? Uh, it, yeah, the, the motion would be the, to approve the, the agenda or approve the consent calendar without the, um, the minutes from April 9th. I'd like to make, make a motion. I'll make the motion or second either one. <laughs> I'll take that as a motion. A second? I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion passes. We'll move on to new business. Um, and Cliff with the finance department briefing. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Um, yeah, we can hear you Cliff. All right, first time I've used the microphone. So um, I just wanted to come and brief you with the update based on what's happening with um, COVID-19. Um, I'd like to start with tax collections. Um, back on May, March 31st, um, we ended the collection year with $602,000 outstanding. That was about $200,000 above where we normally are at that point in time. Um, since then, we have collected about $260,000, leaving about three hundred and forty dollars outstanding as of today. Um, I'm still hoping that we can collect another 200,000 by August 29th, um, which allows us to take all of that into revenue during um, fiscal year 20. Um, we still have about 150 outstanding accounts and I have 11 payment agreements on um, officially recorded. And my thought is there, everyone will have, um, end up with a payment agreement or uh, most people will pay, and then the balance will go off to tax sale with our attorneys uh, for a September tax sale, probably. Is your estimate that we'll have more than normal? Outstanding, Pat? Yeah. Uh, within, within a couple of months? 
I'm, I'm hopeful that um, we're going to be about in the same place that we normally are at June 30th. I think that there's a number, I, I have heard from a number of community members as they paid their taxes, how much they appreciate what the select board did to delay the imp imposition of um, penalties and interest until June 30th, or actually July 1. And I know that we have heard from a number of taxpayers with sizable outstanding balances. Um, there's probably about four or five of them that total just over 100,000 um, that indicated that they will be paying in full by June 30th, taking advantage of the additional cash flow for their businesses. Good. Um, my anticipation is that if we end up, end up at August 29th at the same place um, as last year, um, which means that that amount would be get deferred for the future. Um, we'll miss our revenue targets by about 110,000. Um, most of that, a lot of that is um, the penalties um, that we for, were foregone as, as a result of the board's action for about 21,000. And the second piece of that is the um, state homestead payments that were double budgeted they were included in our tax collections and as a separate line of state homestead payments. Um, a lot of that got made up um, by current use and pilot being over budget. And we end up missing the revenue um, net, net, net by about 81,000. I'm sorry, the, the current use and the pilot was over budget by about 81,000 and we'll miss the revenue target by about 110. To offset that, our expenditures are down by 190,000. Um, a lot of that due to the personnel departures of Marty Sanchez, our zoning administrator, um, Ed Luce, our full-time, quasi-full-time um, lister, and also Wendy Tucker from the finance department. Uh, between salaries and benefits, um, it was a total of about 190,000. So. All that being said, and still very early, and we've got a lot of moving parts between now and June 30th, um, in the general fund, I'm projecting a uh, surplus of about 90 to $100,000. Um, included in that is uh, an estimate for um, a number of different additional expenditures between what's actually recorded and what will actually end up at um, June 30th. And that also includes updating the climate climate control interface in town hall. We've been having trouble with that for the last several years. Uh, Adolfo, you want to talk a little bit more about that? Uh, about the, I'm sorry, uh, Cliff, what was that? The climate control interface for town hall. Yes, um, one of the um, one of the many items that has plagued us for for some time is our aging equipment. Um, we have found that the, uh, the decision makers years ago that established the system that we have now um, authorized a system that was based on what may have been the best available computer program at that time. Um, we are now finding that the computer program that, we, that manages the uh, heating system at Town Hall is now operating on old software versions that um, we have to maintain on two computers that um, essentially are the designated managers of the, of the system. Uh, the fear is that if we do not update the, the heating system, the program that it operates on will at some point become completely um, non-usable with any current or modern computer thereby rendering us unable to, to use the heating system. So um, we'd like to ask the board, um, you know, if, they, if there are any issues, we could bring it back to the future select board meeting and, and talk a little bit more about it. But um, the company that installed the, the, the heating system is willing to, to work with us. We can use some of the anticipated surplus to upgrade the software of this heating system and they're, therefore making it easier to operate. Adolfo, would that include upgrading the ventilating and uh, air exchange part too? Because I know that never has worked well. 
Yeah, that's one of the one one of the challenges that we have is is just the circulation of air. I know that um, the clerk's office has reported to us that um, the air system doesn't flow as well there as maybe at other places, uh, or it flows too well, dropping particulate matter onto cer certain items. Um, it's a different it's a different issue. We do have our grounds crew working with the air um, the air circulation system and the, the company that manages that is coming in so that we can learn more about the filter systems and then we can manage it more by either cleaning filters or ordering filters on a regular basis. Um, so uh, it, the, the, the amount of money that we could potentially spend on the heating system is different than uh, the money that we could spend to figure out what's causing the, the issue with the filters or not filters. But yes, the, the entire system is being looked at, both the air circulation and the heating component. Good. Yeah. Cliff, back to you. Okay. Um, so on to the highway fund. Our revenues are gonna be slightly up for the year, uh, modestly, about $5,000. Um, some of that is um, due to the sales of supplies that we do with the um, school district. And the expenditures for a number of several items, um, workers comp, um, including an audit um, that we had, um, health insurance for our personnel, and spring road maintenance um, were all of those expenditures were pretty significantly over budget. Um, some of it's due to um, our budgeting process, which I, I think we've improved quite a bit um, since I arrived. Um, and some of it's just additional expenses. Um, those are offset by um, reimbursable costs from the FEMA event last April. Um, that was um, about, the FEMA reimbursable for the current year was about $80,000. And so we end up where I'm projecting a deficit of about $10,000 in the highway fund. So like, like the general fund, it's early. Um, and there's still a lot of things moving around and we won't actually know until June 30th comes and goes. Um, the total reimbursable from the FEMA event last spring um, currently is projected at about $315,000. Um, all of that paperwork has been filed and we're just waiting to hear back from FEMA for their um, review and for them to commit funds to us. Any questions about highway before I move on to water and wastewater? Nope. Uh, okay. Um, water and wastewater, um, the board also um, approved a delay in the imposition of penalties and interest on, on current bills for April, May, and June. Um, the collections still seem to be going pretty well. I haven't seen I, re I reviewed today looking back over the last um, 10 months of the fiscal year, and it seems that our 30 to 120 day aging is consistently 10 to $14,000 depending on the month. And right now, uh, today we're, we're at about 14,000. Um, so it doesn't seem like COVID-19 is hurting our collections at this point. Um, I do expect um, to see revenue hits um, with the college being closed and people are and other businesses in town just aren't using water. Um, and if the water isn't being used, um, it doesn't hit the wastewater system. And so we fall back to a minimum billing rather than a usage billing. Um, and so we could see our user fee revenue miss targets by about 10%. Our wastewater and water superintendent is doing a great job and holding the line on expenses as much as he can. Um, and so those budgets still seem to be in the break even area, which is where we projected them when we set the budgets. Um, so moving on to the police fund, um, we've got a few minor things, a few things in the police fund. Um, there's a line item in the prior year, uh, in this year's budget based on prior years when we actually had a police department um, where the, our police 
personnel would attend um, on duty for different events around town and the town would bill out for those events. And that was budgeted at $15,000. And because we're contracting with the sheriff's department, um, we don't see that revenue. On the expenditure side, we've got two fairly sizable ones that are um, weren't budgeted for. Um, one we hope to get reimbursed from FEMA, that's the extra shift for Orange County Sheriff. Um, that's projected to be $18,000 for the current fiscal year. And the other piece of it is the interest on the loan on the um, Singer building that was destined to be the new police station um, when it was purchased. Uh, that'll be about $8,000. Well, I may, Cliff, if I could add one thing, just to um, one thing to the, the comment about the Singer building. Um, as the board knows, um, we've had ongoing conversations with um, a private uh, resident or a private business owner in town that is interested in acquiring the building. Um, the board's uh, decision to allow the child care uh, exploratory group to consider the building um, uh, remains in effect because of, again, the COVID issue and the, the, the municipal planning grant that was funding a, a full review of our, our different sites. Um, although the report has not yet been drafted, uh, the consensus is that um, the Singer building is not the appropriate place for the child care facility. Um, and therefore, we've we've had conversations with the private party interested in the building, and uh, with a little luck, um, the building could potentially drop off of our liability sheets. That'd be great. That would be good. I agree. Can I ask, ask a question? The you talked about the extra shift for Orange County Sheriff. You said FEMA funds. Would that be FEMA or Ovid or? that really be COVID funds? Why would it come out of FEMA? It would be a, a FEMA reimbursable. Um, it would be reimbursable as a, a federal disaster declaration that was issued. And so we, when that is, uh, when, when those funds are made available by the federal government, they're typically at a, uh, at a percentage reimbursement. So um, that's why it would be federal FEMA reimbursement money. It, it would be for the FEMA though, right? I mean, it'd be because of the OVID-19 crisis, which- That's correct, I, Pat. Yes. That must be, have been declared an emergency, okay. Yep, just want to understand, thank you. Yeah, th that shift was added um, as a result of the, um, to, to provide greater backup for the shifts that were on duty due to um, domestic calls. Yep, I remember that. Yep. Yeah. And that's all I have. Thank you for listening. All right. Thank you, Cliff. Thanks, Cliff. Thanks, Cliff. Um, Hi, Senator. Senator. Good. You going to say something, Pat? It says nice to have good news. Oh. Relatively good news. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Nice to hear that things are relatively stable. Um, next on our agenda is the letter to the VSC and Board of Trustees. We're um, we have already email ratified this. We just need to have a formal vote. Is that right, Adolfo? That's right, Larry. Yep, that's right. I'd like to it? move the formal approval of the letter. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Nay, no nays. Motion passes. We move on. We are also going to ratify a previously uh, emailed um, agreement that the select board made about the local emergency management plan for 2020. Um, is there anything else we need to know about this, Adolfo, or are we all set? No, everything's uh, everything's set. Uh, it was sent over to our regional planning commission. They have received um, all of the uh, emergency plans from their member towns and. Um, it's the same plan that had been reviewed by the board. Uh, this is John Pemital. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, John. 
Um, is that uh, plan somewhere that can be reviewed by the public? Uh, after after this meeting, John, we will post it uh, on the website. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Is that get filed in the records, town records. Uh, the the plan uh, it is included in the uh, it'll be included in the select board meeting records, uh, okay. and then it is also included in the regional planning commission's records because they have to collect them yearly. Okay. Uh, just just to, for everyone's uh, edification, uh, everything that the select board receives in its packet is compiled and um, uh, into one record and stored in the clerk's office. So so yes. Okay. If there's no other comments or questions. I'll entertain a motion. So I'll make a motion to ratify the uh, local emergency management plan. I'll second that. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Ayes have it. Motion passes. And we get to move on to the review for request for bids for the Chandler Music Hall uh, the, for the roof repair. Uh, yes, um, in your packets, um, you have a draft. Um, a final draft uh, request for bids that uh, was reviewed by the town, reviewed by uh, representatives of uh, uh, Chandler. Uh, and the, the draft is essentially for approval of the select board and if approved, uh, we can send it out so we could uh, perform much needed repairs at the Chandler uh, Music Hall building. We have here, if there are any questions, uh, Sharon and Karen um, have uh, very direct knowledge of, of the issue, so they, they could answer questions. I believe uh, Michael's on here as well. He could probably answer questions. Great. Yeah, I have one question. Um, as I was reading that report, it's um, the RFP that there, um, that it calls for an additional one inch of poly ISO rigid insulation. Um, is that to increase the efficiency of the building? Is that what that's about that while the roof is being taken apart, we're gonna take it as an opportunity to make it a little more heating efficient? Yes, that usually is helpful, Larry. We might as well take the opportunity. Yeah. I, I think though that it was under insulated to begin with. So when it was looked at, um, contractors noticed that it, it doesn't have the, you know, what would be standard now if you were replacing the roof. So. Mm -hmm. it, this is apparently the standard kind of what would be recommended for a new vinyl roof, um, which might have been different 15 years ago when sure. that went on, or 20 years. We're not sure how long ago that part of it was replaced. Yeah. Do we um, do we know how much? Do you know how much um, how thick the insulation is existing? I don't. Michael, do you have any sense of it? I. Don't have an idea, but we could certainly find yeah. out. I think I believe that when they did the renovation, uh, they blew insulation into the attic, so it's 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 not up on the on the roof, but it on the floor joists, and it's uh, uh, loose loose insulation. You know, that's blown in insulation. Okay, so there's so there's the. So are those jo like joists that hold up the roof or so are they really, is, or is that like, yeah, is that ba basically rafters and that? They're, they're the ceiling joists that hold, that are the, are the roof uh, in, the, in the room. So between the ceiling and the, the, the roof joists, there's probably four or five feet of dead airspace in there. Oh. And I, I can't tell you what the what the insulation situation is in the roof itself. All I know is what's on top of the ceiling. Okay. So on top of the ceiling, is that a heated space? Above no. that cellulose? No, it's oh. not heated up there. Okay. I'm just not sure what you would gain by adding insulation above above that unheated space in that case. 
Yeah. I actually think it was the engineers who added it because they thought it, it should have some level of insulation, but we could, you know, we could look into that if it seems like that needs to be altered in the bid. Okay. I don't know if this is uh, worth it, but they, the situation over the main hall is basically the same situation. I do not believe that there is insulation up in the, up in the roof and it's not a heated area. As a matter of fact, it's ventilated, but there's about, I don't know, 12 to 15 inches of cellulose blown in insulation on the ceiling of the main hall. So I look at these two areas as being very similar to each other. And I would question why spend money uh, on rigid insulation to uh, insulate it, uh, an unheated space. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you, Michael. It's, it doesn't seem like it would be a, unless there's some other information that we're missing, it does, it, at its face, doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense. Who is, who is the engineer doing that? Should we go back to the engineers and ask them to clarify why they thought that would be necessary? Yeah, that'd be great. I would lo love to, to love to, because if we're missing something that then we're, we will learn something new, but without it, if there's nothing else to know about this, it's hard to see why we would need it. Has the did the engineer go up there? Well, they were familiar from all of the records that they had from the renovation. Okay, but I'm, I'm speaking specifically about the damage that there is to some of this Roof joists. No, there. They, no one. Ha, no one has been inside um, except for Seth. Took pictures that he shared with the damage that was done on the that rafter space, but no engineer has looked at it. It would seem to me that before you could put a RFP together, you would have to know basically what needs to be done, and in my mind, it's not just putting a new roof on they may have to repair a lot of roof rafters um, due to the damage that's already um, occurred. And I think that's important when you go out to um, ask for bids that they know what needs to be done. I think the first step in the RFP, uh, Michael, is to take off what's there to see what has to be done, right? Yeah, if, if I could... Um make a comment here uh, a, a part of the the bid request is for prospective contractors or roofers to inspect so uh well even though we list specifications in the in the request for bids the contractors are going to or are being asked to submit their their best available proposal for the project and if they in their proposal say you don't need this insulation right. for this reason, then that will be a part of the decision-making process of vetting through all the bids that come in and then bringing those bids to the select board for their final review and selecting a contractor. Um, so, you, you know, as far as the actual insulation, you know, that, that could have come from the engineer, we could change the language to say, you know, we recommend or include a paragraph in the bids form that say deviating from this is not going to eliminate someone but deviating from what's in, on the requested scope list you know should be substantiated some way so if someone says we're not going to put insulation this is you know they'll also say this is why we're not putting in insulation in the bid um, so uh, but but to Michael your point you're right um, unless unless someone actually cracks the roof open, they won't really know the extent of the damage. And, and that's something that we run into regularly when we repair roads is we go into it with a project and then when they crack a road open, they find that the sub base is not what it should be. And then that, that causes a change order, which then the contractor comes to us and say, look, we didn't know that your support beams were completely rotted and the building is gonna collapse. So you have to approve this new part of the project. Um, but Adolfo, you can you can examine the inside of that bay. It is uh, you can get up there. There's a, a hatch in in the upper gallery, 
that you can go in and actually walk around and see what the damage is in there. I don't think you need to tear the roof up to find out what's going on inside that gallery. Oh, and I, I agree. Yeah, we definitely are not going to encourage anyone to do that. We do have two specific dates on the bid sheet uh, where we encourage prospective bidders to schedule a time so that they could come in and inspect. Um, Seth is a contact so that he can walk them through the location. The contractors could see what, what the potential damage is. Um, and any bidder that submits a bid that didn't come to inspect, you know, we probably won't consider seriously because they didn't take the time to come and look at it. Uh, but yes, there are two dates specifically where we, we will ask contractors to schedule a, a site visit to allow them to inspect the site and still respect the COVID um, restrictions that are in place. Could that be an addendum to the bid? Uh, depending on what they find in the inspections? Uh, it, it could be a part of their bid. Um, you know, they, they could turn around and, and tell us, this is what we noticed. So part of their bid is, is going to include everything that they physically saw. Um, you know, in a perfect world, every bid would be the same because everyone saw the same thing. But um, you're right, Pat, that there are there are, there's a likelihood that bids may be different because some contractors are better than others. Some see something more than others. And it would be left to um, representatives from Chandler and the town when we sort through the bids to pick the best one that, or the one that we feel fits what we are looking for and fixes the problem. And then we will present that to the select board for final approval. I would think on the insulation, a quick call to the um, engineer would answer that question. We'd know that ahead of time that way. Right, and then to follow up and just see um, the, the thinking behind the insulation question. Um, and then the other we can attach to the bid so that when they look at the beams, they have you know knowledge of what's actually up there. Adolfo, is there anything to be gained? I'm looking at the language in the uh, RFP and uh, it says all parties interested in submitting a bid may visit the work site to perform an inspection. Um, is there anything to be gained by mandating that so that um, when they do submit their bid, they know exactly uh, what they're likely to be dealing with? Um. I mean, we can take it, we can change it to like should, but, um, you know, I, I think that's part of the weeding out is if we make it optional and we get, we, oh, I don't oh, okay. anticipate us getting a bid from anyone that didn't visit. Uh, it's not unlikely, you know, it could happen, but yeah, that, that you yeah. know, Karen, Sharon and, and the town staff can just look at it and be like, they don't know what the project is. They're not going to be a final. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so maybe we get a chance to find out what the the, the, the rationale behind the insulation is. And if, if we find out that we really don't need it, we can take it out. Okay. That was my, that was my yeah. only question. All right. So are we going to make a motion to do this with that little addendum? Uh, I, I I would I certainly would would definitely recommend the board to um, approve at least conditionally approve the 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 request for bids now uh, pending us you know collecting that information and sharing it with everyone through email and then if there are any objections we could we could hold off but in addition to approval of the of the request for bid draft I would like to ask the board to also authorize the expenditure of of the $25,000 that are earmarked for this project in the facility uh, reserve fund. The board already knows, I think, that we were able to secure $25,000 in matching funds from the Vermont Community Foundation, and that's already in the town account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Karen. I would like to move because I think we really need to keep this moving forward. I'd yep. like to move the approval of this um, 
with the, with the uh, addendum that we're going to look into the insulation question and approve the $25,000 allocation from our special fund as well. And approve the request for bids, right? Right. Yeah. 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 That's what I meant to say. Okay. I'll second that now. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Motion passes. We can move on to the swimming pool project. Can I ask a Chandler question while people are still there? Sure. sure. My question is, was there any damage inside the building from the leaking roof? Um, superficial only so far. I mean, we have buckets where all the leaks are coming in, but it's every rain now that it's leaking. It was just some heavy rains. Now it's a sprinkle and we get water in the bucket. So I'm I'm so grateful that you guys are approving this. We, we really need to have it done or we're gonna have some major damage coming up. As the person so who creates the money. Right? <laughs> Could I? For the floor, I'm really glad we're doing this. <laughs> are you emptying those buckets regularly? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are. It's I'm sure. since we're still coming to the building. <laughs> Would it make sense to have, uh, I know that this process isn't going to happen. They're not gonna fix the leak uh, uh, short term. I, I'm sure that we're talking months here. Would it make sense to, to contact someone and do a fix in that corner or wherever it's coming in? Uh, a a Band-Aid repair that will alleviate additional damage inside? I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, as we know, the last patch, which did fix more or less the leak that we were having um, near the front of the upper gallery, that patch you know, cost us $2,000. So it's not cheap to have one spot patched, but I I guess it's up to you guys, you know, how we feel about, like, should we have a company come and put a patch? I, we, we believe it's leaking this time most around near the chimney. There's also a very dark piece of the roofing there, which the other spot was a very dark, you know, you can kind of see that water had been seeping through for a long time. Um, there are many dark spots across the whole roof, but in this near the bell tower, there's a big spot and it might very well be that if we got a patch just for that area, it would hold us for a couple months the way the other one has held for a couple months. So, uh, yeah, I, I think with just as quickly as we're we can move, I, um, and I, I don't anticipate this now that the bids are proposed, I, it's probably going to take a month for us to be able to select a contractor and then just say to them, start ASAP. Um, so I, I don't anticipate this process taking more than two or three months, especially with the COVID shutdown. I think there will be a lot of people looking for work. Um, and so I, 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 you know, I don't anticipate us being put in line fourth or fifth. I think people are just gonna start looking for work and this will be a very, very easy thing. I think the other big fear is if the board and, and the Chandler group authorize a patch that the patch ends up being taken off because the repair has to be made to the roof. And now it's an extra one, $2,000 that we didn't have to spend because it was torn out to replace that section. I mean, I, I do think if, um, if it goes on too many months, right? If there's a snag anywhere along the line, then Michael's right, we probably saved money over the long term by keeping the water out of the building. But if it's a couple months, we're already into this um, a year. <laughs> it was one of the very first meetings I had when I came to Chandler a year ago today. <laughs> yeah. And so we've, you know, we've been emptying those buckets for a year. We'll empty them for a couple more months. Yeah. All right. I think we're now ready to move on. Um, Swimming pool, Adolfo? Yes. Uh, well, thanks, Karen. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, yeah, thanks Sally. so much. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Very, Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks. Here. Nice Thanks. to see you Bye -bye. both. Same here. See all of you. Um, so moving on to the, the swimming pool uh, project bid. This is an ongoing project to uh, complete repairs to, the, to our aged municipal pool. Um, the board had um, previously authorized us to send out a uh, request for bids 
uh, for painting and the sanding and the repairing of the pool. Uh, we are now at the point where we have received uh, one bid. Um, it's not surprising that it was just one bid because of um, you know just the size of the pool that we have and, and, and the type of work that is necessary. Um, so if the board were to approve the the one bid that is in your packet, uh, we would ask that you authorize the expenditure of forty two thousand dollars from two different sources. The first source being from the uh, twenty thousand from the recreation facilities reserve fund, and twenty two thousand from the anticipated uh, surplus that we will have that we're expecting to have in the general fund this this fiscal year. Okay, so I'll make the motion that we accept the bid submitted by Vermont Peck for protective coatings for the two and use the two sources of funding that Adelpo just suggested. And I will second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Nays. No nays, the motion passes. Thank you. And we can move on to the East Village, um, East Randolph Village designation application. Uh, yes, uh, Josh has been working with uh, representatives from the East Valley Community Group on pulling together uh, an application to reinstate the East Randolph Village uh, Village designation. Uh, John Pimental, who's on the call uh, on this meeting, um, uh, did a lot of the legwork. Um, so we you know, wanted to say thank you for, for his contribution. Um, and at this point, we are uh, hoping to have the select board vote to approve the application so that we could submit it to the Department of Housing and Community Development so that they can subsequently uh, authorize us to become a village designated area in East Randolph. Okay, I'll make the motion to uh, authorize uh, the town of Randolph to submit an application to Vermont Housing and Community Development Program for designation of the village, a village designation in East Randolph. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Nays. No nays. The motion passes. Great, thank you. Next on our agenda is uh, the Harmony Park project. Uh, yes, we have a representative here um, from the uh, Sunrise Rotary Club and then also, uh, actually no, both representatives from the Sunrise Rotary Club. Um, uh, and they have both chosen to make both club, I'm sorry, both the Sunrise Club and the afternoon uh, Rotary Club have chosen to make the Harmony Park project a part of their service project. Uh, and here we have both Sonny and David um, to talk a little bit more about their efforts. Adolfo, um, John Holmes, who is the current president of the Noon Rotary Club, uh, couldn't be here this evening. He's a bit of a Zoomophobic. Um, and so he asked me to speak um, on on behalf of the Noon Rotary Club, and I can also speak on behalf of the Arts and Culture Committee, which has vetted this project as well. So when the time is appropriate, uh, after Sonny and David have spoken, I'm happy to address the issue as well. Thank you, Tom. Well, thanks for the uh, intro, Adolfo. Let, let me lead off. Uh, and uh, also uh, joining in as a participant this evening is, is Ken Vandermark. The, uh, the president of the Sunrise Rotary Club. Uh, Sonny's joining us as the uh, president-elect uh, coming in uh, to office the 1st of July. Uh, and as has been mentioned, uh, this is a, a combined community service project involving uh, the Sunrise Club and, and the Randolph Noon Club uh, with the intent to bring uh, an ensemble of outdoor percussion instruments uh, to the playground area at the recreation field. Uh, this is... Uh, well within the uh, Rotary tradition of, of uh, tr 
taking on uh, local service projects that, that we uh, see can uh, be a benefit to the community. And uh, this idea of the uh, uh, outdoor percussion instruments uh, was just at a, a new dimension of involvement, uh, community involvement uh, uh, down at the uh, down at the playground area, uh, not only for uh, for kids but uh, for for teenagers and and adults. Uh, just a uh, fun we, we see it as a, a really fun community building enhancement to, to that area. Uh, it's a project that has been underway for really uh, it's uh, coming on just about a year now since uh, we uh, first identified this and, and, and started to work on it. Uh, and, and that effort really has uh, kind of been like a threefold. Uh, one, uh, first, when I use the term Harmony Park, uh, that kind of has two, two uh, uh, references to it. Harmony Park actually is a company that uh, manufactures and, and, and creates outdoor percussion instruments for, for outdoor venues. Um, and I'm also using the term Harmony Park because I like the term and it's, it's kind of the project title here for uh, what the two clubs are working on. Uh, but our, our effort has involved uh, then with the Harmony Park Company trying to identify what would be an ensemble of instruments uh, that would work really well uh, down at the playground uh, and uh, be within a, a cost range that we'd be able to raise the, the, the money for, which has been a, a, a second part of our effort to this point. Uh, and I'll speak a little more about that in a moment. And then a, a third part of the process has been uh, community outreach, uh, trying to connect with uh, uh, the significant town committees that would have an interest in this, as well as uh, other community organizations. Um, all along, uh, we felt that we wanted to uh, do some really solid groundwork on this before bringing it to the select board. Uh, but here we are tonight, uh, and, and, and this is a good time to bring the project to the select board. Uh, the ultimate conclusion of this community service project by late in the summer, that will be late August, maybe into, into September, uh, would be the hoped for result of uh, gifting the installed Harmony Park project uh, to the town. And, and we'd uh, be interested in an action item tonight on the select board's part, uh, expressing its interest or willingness to accept this gift. Uh, and I would uh, say contingent upon uh, our continuing to work with the Recreation Committee through to the completion of the project and also contingent upon our ability to, to raise all the funds uh, necessary for the project. Um, to those two points, uh, the Recreation Committee has been involved with this since October. Uh, that was the first opportunity uh, that um, I, I had to, to bring this project to their attention. Uh, it's been on their agenda uh, every, every month uh, since then. And uh, uh, the, the project has uh, been uh, well, well vetted with, with the Recreation Committee. Um, Indeed. One of the uh, key issues was, was, was the location. And uh, finally, uh, five different sites were considered for location. Uh, the committee uh, in March uh, uh, convened the first part of their, their March meeting down at, at the playground area and, and did come to a unanimous uh, opinion as to the, the site that uh, these instruments should be located. Uh, and I would agree it, it, it is a good site for it. Uh, and that area is between the uh, current playground equipment uh, and the parking area that uh, comes in off of, of Park Street. Uh, there's a fence that separates that parking area from the playground, uh, but there's also a, uh, a very usable swath of land on the playground side of that fence before you actually get to the playground equipment. Uh, that's beneficial, I, I think, in terms of the committee's view as, as to uh, future plans they have for um, additional playground equipment. Uh, this doesn't interfere with that, but it's also very beneficial, again, getting back to the idea of community. Uh, you want this kind of an installation at a point where, where people are already assembled. Uh, and, and certainly that, that, that is the case uh, down, down at the playground. Uh, so this would get a lot of attention and again, it would, would bring a whole other element uh, to, to that area. Uh, other issues uh, or questions with the, uh, the Recreation Committee uh, have included uh, sound levels, uh, 
uh, instrument maintenance, uh, the warranty, uh, the, the actual installation of this. And uh, on that point, uh, uh, the intent at this point uh, for the to, for the entire installation of these instruments uh, uh, is to work with uh, Colby Haupt of, of Hilltop Construction to do the site preparation. A couple of the instruments require uh, a cement footing, others require posts that they're mounted to. Uh, Colby has seen the, uh, the specs and all of that, understands the work, and indicates he thinks actually he probably could accomplish it in, in about a day. Uh, but it, it is something that wants to be uh, handled uh, by a uh, professional in, in, in terms of that site preparation and mounting. That's, there are some things that the Rotary Clubs can do going forward with, with instrument maintenance, uh, which, which is fairly simple, and I think that's something we, we could commit to. Uh, and then uh, I, I guess finally, just to kind of conclude my overview, uh, in, in terms of the funding for this, the uh, cost of the purchase of the instruments and, and then the installation by Hilltop Construction uh, is, is pretty much right at $25,000. Uh, I would also like to see the project include uh, uh, some benches in that area and uh, a sign explaining uh, what these Harmony Park instruments are, inviting participation, and then also indicating who uh, the uh, funding sponsors for, for the project uh, are. And then to this point, um, we, we've raised $18,000, uh, and this has involved uh, commitments from eight, eight different uh, funding sources. Um, we have in front of us uh, still several pending grants uh, that we'll know about uh, during the first part of July. And then most significant in terms of the re remaining pending grants uh, is a $4,000 grant that the Sunrise Club has submitted to Rotary District 7850 for funding on this. And likewise, a $4,000 grant request from the Noontime Club also to Rotary District 7850 uh, in support of the project. So, uh, potentially could be $8,000 in support of the project. Uh, the other significant grant still out there that we'll know about early in July is a uh, AARP Community Challenge Grant uh, for the amount of $7,500. Um, the fundraising has gone well. I, I think we're positioned uh, well with, with the uh, remaining grants that, that we're looking for. Uh, so look, uh, kind of the low range we need to get to is 25. Uh, we'd like to get to 30 so we can do the benches and, and, and the sign as well. That's the, there's an overview. Um, I had sent out at Adolfo, or provided anyway at Adolfo's request, a uh, one page information piece on this project uh, that probably you, you saw with your board packet. Uh, but I'm available, I see Tim Schroeder from the Sunrise Club is with us, uh, Ken Vandermark is, uh, Sonny, and, and Tom is representing the Noon Club. So that's what we'd like to do. Um, uh, it's, it's been a uh, good project for us to work on, a fun project to work on, and, and we think it'll be, bring a really nice enhancement down to, uh, to that important resource for the town. Yeah, I've been a part of uh, almost all of those rec committee meetings, and uh, it, it sure has been gone over very thoughtfully. They gave it very good attention, yet uh, deservedly so. Uh, the arts, uh, well, uh, Tom mentioned the Arts and Culture Committee uh, uh, has also been involved with this. Uh, uh, I've had a chance to uh, make regular presentations to the R3 Tourism and Economic Development Committee, uh, trying to keep them informed. Uh, also, the, uh, the the Senior Center and uh, uh, had had some uh, really good response at, at the Senior Center in, in, in terms of uh, people there, uh, the, uh, the seniors there saying, wow, this give us an opportunity to, to do something at, at the recreation field or down at the playground with, with our grandkids. Uh, or wouldn't it be great to have um, uh, some impromptu uh, Sunday evening concerts down there? Uh, when I talk about instruments, um, the, the, these are real musical instruments. They're, they're outdoor percussion instruments. They're real instruments. Uh, they have a sculptural, sculptural beauty to them, uh, and literally anybody can play them. And I can vouch for that from personal experience, having visited several Harmony Park sites and being a person of limited musical ability. At first, I held back. I was a little hesitant. 
then I realized that people were just coming in and, and they were just joining in. The whole thing was spontaneous. Uh, people would play, some would walk away, somebody else would come in and find that I got up the, uh, the nerve and the gumption to, to, to go forward and realize, wow, I, you know, I, I, I could do rhythms on, on these instruments and, uh, and, and be part of kind of what was happening. I mean, I enjoyed it while I was listening. I enjoyed playing with the people who a couple of minutes ago I'd never even met. And uh, that's the uh, spontaneity that is possible with this. So it does, you know, you talk about musical instruments. Uh, this doesn't involve uh, a lot in the way of musical training, but those who have musical training uh, can really uh, also do some more sophisticated um, rhythms and and, uh, and and music with with these. So, so it, I, I think it, it reaches out to a lot of people and and just a lot of ways of building community. Yeah, um, I just I just want to underscore that the Arts and Culture Committee. Uh, gave this project its unanimous endorsement at uh, at our January meeting, right before the whole shutdown kicked into effect. And uh, I've also worked um, in my role as president-elect of the Noon Rotary Club extensively with Sonny and Ken and David over the course of the last several months on um, fundraising and grant writing, including the two grants that uh, David referenced to our Rotary District. Uh, and um, I think this is just a really solid opportunity to bring an exciting arts and culture element to the playground and recreation area. Uh, and um, uh, I wanna give it my wholehearted support as well. Uh, it's, uh, it's a project that Rotary clubs around the country, uh, going back any number of years, beginning in Moab, Utah, uh, what a decade or more ago now um, have been involved with and it's just been extraordinarily successful in, in other areas um, uh, of a similar nature to Randolph around the country and I think it'll be a beautiful addition to the um, to the recreation area in times ahead. Thanks for mentioning uh, Tom let me just uh, elaborate for a moment uh, there, there actually are hundreds of Harmony Park sites around the U.S. and, and, and around the world uh, uh, David, this would be this would, this would be the uh, the biggest one in Vermont. <laughs> it puts Vermont on on the uh, arts and culture map a little further. Excuse me, Larry, you're going to say? Oh, I was just saying. I I um, I, I suspect we've all been um, you know more than convinced that this is a great idea, and I'm wondering if it's time for us to to move on. Um, do Adolfo? Do we need a uh, a motion from the select board to approve installing this on the town park land? Uh, we would, yes, because it is on town property. Yeah. Okay. I have a motion, Larry, if you'd like one. I would love it, Pat. I'm aiming for the longest motion tonight. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll email it to Shannon. <laughs> Motions to approve the Harmony Park project, to have the Rotary Groups coordinate this project with the Rec Department, and to have expenses for Harmony Park to come from funds raised by Rotary. Uh, the town will accept Harmony Park instruments when installation is successfully completed. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, all members on the select board. Thank you. So, all right, looking forward to seeing that. Hey, that should be great. Uh, and I'm looking forward to having a, uh, you know, get beyond these restrictions and have ourselves a party down there at the end of the summer. Yeah, so, thank, you, thank you for all the time you put into this. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. Thank you so much, David. All right, let's see where we're at next. Uh, climate change letter. Yes, in your packet uh, is a draft uh, letter uh, in response to the article that was passed at last town meeting. Um, the letter was uh, drafted uh, by a member of the board, so uh, it would truly be uh, a letter with the voice of the select board responding to uh, uh, a request by, by the voters. Uh, Tom, uh, 
Yeah, is that Pat? I asked Larry if he was ready for another motion. Oh, you're all over it tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I can hide, I do it more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If, if there's if there's no objections, um, absolutely. Okay. I think we should continue with these Zoom meetings. If Pat's more active. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they wait better. <laughs> You can get your cup uh, of coffee when you need it, right? Yeah. That's uh, perfect. I thought Tom did a nicely written letter, first of all. Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks good. Thank you. Thank you. Shows the intent of what uh, town meeting voted, I think. So I am I approve we move we I move we approve this letter and send it to the people um, signified on it. And okay. I will I will second that and just uh, request of Adolfo when the letters actually go out, if you could um, CC or alert the select board that they have indeed been sent, it would just be helpful to know that all the T's have been crossed and I's dotted, so. Oh, I, I will. I, uh, the plan when they do send these letters is typically to send the hard copy, but then also send a, uh, a PDF version. So what I can do is I will send a PDF version to our three legislators, uh, and then also include the select board as CC recipients of, of the email. Excellent. Uh, this is John Pemetal. Could I make a request as well? Go ahead. Um, I'm wondering if the if a copy could also be sent to the local newspaper um, for inclusion in, in their edition if they would like to do that. Sounds reasonable Dave, to me. David's right on there. I'm sure he'll he'll get a copy. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. So I suspect we still need a motion. I think you just had it, didn't you? I think we just had it. Pat you got it. Did we vote? Tom seconded it. Oh, so we need a vote. We need a call to question. Yep. All right. Let's um all in favor aye 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 opposed motion passes uh, again tom thanks again for composing that letter you're quite welcome pleased to do it thanks we'll move on to grants uh the grant that uh has been put on the agenda is uh, a grant that we're requesting assistance um from the Lamson Howell Foundation, which is, I believe, a Randolph-based uh, organization. Mm -hmm. um, the After my search through um, the World Wide Web these days, uh, everything's online now, um, I found that, again, Lamson Howell, I didn't know much about it until we looked up, and it is um, based here in Randolph. Uh, the chair of the East Valley Community Group has shared with me that uh, this group does provide uh, grants and funding to community-based projects within the greater Randolph area. Uh, a draft letter was shared this evening with me for the Lamson Howell uh, request. Uh, I was not able to share it with the board because it, it wasn't uh, sent to me with enough time to, to share with everybody and meet the open meeting requirements. So um, if the board approves the town requesting a grant from the Lamson Howell Foundation, I would uh, most likely use the letter provided by the East Valley Community Group as a template um, and then send that request to the Lamson Howell Foundation. What specifically is this grant in support of? Uh, the grant is uh, being requested, uh, I believe it's a $12,000 request to help fund uh, architectural uh, needs of the East uh, Randolph Hall. Uh, the money would be used to pay for an architect to perform its work or perform their work on, uh, on the East Randolph Hall. I just want to say I'm quite familiar with Lamps and Howell from having worked with them on a number of grants in the past. and. Um, that's a pretty sizable request of that particular uh, fund. Um, their grants are typically in smaller amounts, but I'm just putting that out there. That's not to say that we shouldn't go for the gusto, but. 
Thanks, Tom. Uh, the, I, I can share with the board that the amount is not um, chosen by the by the town town staff. It came from mm -hmm. East Valley Group, so I can go back to the East Valley Group and and say that if the final version of our letter to the Lamson Howell Foundation could read something to the effect of, you know, we'd like to request up, you know, the the total amount of twelve thousand, but we'll leave it up to Lamson Howell. Uh, uh, you know, provide whatever amount they feel comfortable. Yeah, and that's typically the way it works um, yeah. in any event. Um, but it, it's always good to reach for the golden ring. So. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so at this point, if the board were, were to entertain the request, it would just be to authorize uh, town staff to seek a, a grant fund through Lamson House. Does Adolfo, does the letter include that East Valley Community Hall group is um, working on this project? I just uh, think I've, yeah, I haven't had a chance to review the whole letter yet, but um, you know, any letter that, that we would send from the town to Lamson Howell um, wouldn't be verbatim from someone else. We will craft it to have the town's voice uh, it would specifically mention that the the grant would service East East Valley Community Group, and that the town is drafting this letter on on their behalf as a town committee uh, through the approval of the Randolph Select Board. Good. I like the way you said that. That's yeah. good. A uh, uh, question for John: Is he still on here? Uh, yes, yeah. I am. Yeah. So I'm just curious. Um, are you guys planning on uh, applying for the 501c3 program? Adolfo mentioned that to me a couple weeks ago. Yes, that's in process. Okay, very good. Okay, are we ready for a motion? I move that we approve the, uh, the request for the grant uh, and the town support therefore. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. And I think we should move on. Old I do have, this is John Pemital again. I, yeah, I, I do have one question. What um, time frame do we think the town will have prepared this letter? Uh, I, I, I did. I hate to tell you tomorrow. It's probably not going to be tomorrow, but as soon as possible. <laughs> okay, I'm not looking for tomorrow. Uh -huh. yeah. it, it won't be a month. I can I can tell you that it, it you know may take a week uh, at most, as far as I can see, but no more than a week. Okay, thank you. Appointments, Adolfo. Uh, yes, we um, with the departure of our previous uh, highway superintendent several months ago left a vacancy uh, a vacancy in, in our representative for two rivers out of Queechee's transportation advisory committee um, Morgan our current highway superintendent has agreed to serve as our representative so if the board were to appoint Morgan uh, he would serve as our representative to the two rivers tax committee I'll move to appoint uh, Morgan Drury to the Two Rivers Transportation Advisory Committee. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Motion passes. Other business? Do we have other business, Adolfo? No other business, no. We got some information. Manager's report? Yes. Uh, we do have the manager's report. Um, uh, I'll be brief. Uh, we, um, as I shared with the board yesterday, we had a break in one of our wastewater lines. The break was tapped yesterday uh, early evening, so um, it received uh, the uh, utmost attention, and um, we're able to have it tapped. 
Uh, we have made arrangements to continue wastewater service to the Randolph Center community that um, is a part of the, uh, the wastewater district. So that should not be a problem. At this point, we're just uh, working with the aftermath, um, working with uh, state agencies that are uh, investigating, monitoring the, the work. They were out here, representatives of the state agencies were out here today, confirmed that uh, the cap has uh, taken hold and we're not uh, continuously releasing wastewater into the Adams Brook um, waterway. So um, no other information to report now other than just we're working to correct the issue and that no wastewater is leaking into the Adams Brook. Um, uh, the, the vast majority of the last several weeks uh, for me, time-wise, has been spent on HR-related issues, as, uh, as I'm sure it's uh, the same with uh, um, my counterparts throughout the state and the country, really. Um, we have secured um, hand sanitizer stations, and we posted them throughout Town Hall, so anyone that visits Town Hall, when the hall reopens, will have um, regular access to hand sanitizers. We've also purchased um, dividers so that the staff that have contact with the public have at least a barrier between the two so that there's no direct connection between the, the two with uh, the, uh, the droplets that are now shared in regular media now. Um, we, um, so that, that's, that's the HR issue. We've completed the VOSHA trainings. Uh, there were some mandatory VOSHA trainings We've purchased face masks for all staff. Um, so you know, we'll keep fine tuning as guidance is, is issued by the governor's office and his team. Uh, we have an ongoing issue with uh, the Department of Environmental Conservation with regard to a manganese uh, uh, and reservoir project. Um, it's gonna continue to be a long running haul they at this point are reinterpreting the court's ruling in a way that we don't feel is accurate, but they do. Uh, we're hoping to avoid future litigation, but um, uh, in order to avoid an ongoing issue, which is the, the town of Randolph having an interpretation on a federal regulation and the state having an interpretation on the federal regulation, uh, I decided best to write a letter to US EPA to say, how do you interpret this? And then that is the end all because whatever they say is what we here in the town and the state have to abide by. So uh, I have asked our congressional delegation to help push that letter along just so that we can get some clarification from US EPA and we hope to have it soon. Josh has worked with our regional planning commission to try to have uh, or obtain an extension to our Northern Borders Regional Committee grant, our $450,000 grant. Uh, we feel we may have an extension that would be COVID related. So uh, that's that's in the works. Uh, Raman has continued to meet and discuss ways to, to continue to help our community. Um, there was a call today uh, with some very um, uh, helpful information that was exchanged by members of Raman. Uh, after the call, we received a, I received an email message from the uh, the State Emergency Operations Center that um, is essentially making available 20 cases of uh, MREs, which is the, um, the, uh, the food that is issued to the military with their deployment um, to any municipality that is in need. So right now I'm working with the Sheriff's Department and then also with uh, the Raman leadership to determine what our need is, if any, and if we do have a need, we can request these 20 cases of, of these ready to eat meals. Uh, so we'll have more on that. We received a notice that the Better Roads grant program is on hold indefinitely because of the uh, continued expense of dealing with the COVID outbreak. We had applied for a $60,000 grant to help uh, fix the Beanville Road culvert. Um, we're not gonna know if we get this grant because the state won't award this grant because they don't know if they're gonna have the money to award. So that puts a bit of a damper on that. We do have the funds to repair this, uh, this culvert. We were just hoping to obtain some assistance so we can use less uh, Randolph money and more state money, but um, we'll progress as, as, as we can. 
Uh, and then again, just wanted to reiterate some of the changes that, uh, and efficiencies that uh, we have found uh, in the finance department. Cliff has really performed a yeoman's work in finding a lot of inefficiencies that uh, exist. And so um, uh, we're gonna continue to look for those. Some of those are uh, tracking fuel consumption. Um, that's something that we've started to, to really take um, a note of. Uh, one of the other strategies that we're looking to, to implement is a, a year or two years worth of fuel purchase, uh, both diesel fuel and building uh, heating fuel, uh, because prices are at record lows now. And if we could lock in two years worth of fuel at these record low prices, uh, we will spend less money over the next two years on diesel fuel and heat, uh, building heating fuel. Um, so those are just a few of the things that we're looking to, to do. And, uh, as we find these inefficiencies, we'll bring them to the board for, for, for your review. Uh, and that, that is all I have for now. Adolfo, could, yeah. could you just clarify a couple of things I didn't really hear? Sure. The, letter, the letter to federal agency, who is that to, did you say? Uh, it was the US EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. Okay. It was and sent to them because they are the agency that um, uh, governs the uh, National Secondary uh, Water Quality Standards. Yeah, makes sense. I just didn't hear it. And the second one, 20 cases of what were you saying? Uh, they're called MREs. They are essentially uh, uh, prepackaged uh, 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 dried food that oh, okay. are made available. They're, they're, they're essentially military food that the National Guard and, and the federal government have made available for for anyone in need of, of food. Yeah, thank you. Sure. And there's one other thing we have. <clears throat> so um, Josh is working on a way for us to possibly help some of the uh, restaurants downtown. Oh, yes, thanks, uh, Gary. You wanna, thanks, you wanna bring that up? So uh, yes, um, so Josh has been working with our, um, um, our Economic Development Committee and they all as a group is led, led by Josh working with our uh, local uh, business owners, um, more specifically with our restaurant owners, when they are finally allowed to open normally, they are gonna be at a diminished capacity for internal seating. So um, Josh has been making a lot of calls on how to potentially expand their seating by being outdoors. Um, one of the strategies uh, would be to close down Merchants Row starting at a certain time, say, you know, three, four, five o'clock, whatever it is. Um, and that would allow restaurant owners to make use of the whole road, make it a pedestrian only walkable road, bring tables and chairs out from, you know, for a designated time uh, or close it down permanently for the, the short period of time in the next three, four, five months until restaurant regulations are eased and business owners can then have 50, 75, 100% capacity in there in their restaurants. Um, this would allow them to continue to serve if their capacity is 50 customers, they can continue to serve 50 customers by not, not having them inside, but having them sit outside. Um, so- Great uh, idea. Well, yeah. so the concept behind this is I've been working with the rest of the tent rental vendors and I know what's going on around the country because some of this is occurring in certain places. So what they're doing is basically creating food courts in areas that make sense um, where you can limit the traffic. And then the goal here is to try to get some of the funding from the CARES Act to pay for this throughout the state. So it'll do two things. It'll help us tent companies and it'll help the restaurants because the restaurants are in dire need. They are looking for anywhere between 140 to 190 million to help them restart. So the big challenge here is, is they don't have the ability in their budgets to fund, you know, cover. So as a matter of fact, I've been touring around looking at different locations throughout the state the last couple of days, trying to figure out how we can, you know, these restaurants are calling us saying, how much is it gonna cost us for a tent? And can you put it here? So we've been working on this concept to try to do something more along the lines of a community effort where we can. That's an excellent idea. Is there anything we can do at the state level, Perry, working with our legislators to encourage support for this kind of initiative, not just here in Randolph, but- uh... Well, I, I think we can, we can talk with them about it. They're aware of it because um, actually 
Peter was on the economic development meeting that I was on earlier before I got on here. And <clears throat> right now, this is pretty much in the hands of, you know, the Agency of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we all have <clears throat> connections there. And so we're um, chatting with them. Um, I have made the suggestion that to them on Tuesday and through one of their committees, one of the task force. And so I know I've received a letter back that it's something that's on the docket to be discussed. It was either discussed today or it's gonna be on for tomorrow. And so for a future meeting for, uh, uh, locally here, what we plan to do is bring the issue specifically to the select board because uh, a road closure would require a vote of the board. Uh, by that point, we will have um, a clear plan of you know the road being closed either permanently or the, the warmer months that, that are coming so that restaurants can, can stay open or a closure for the summer months. But those closure that closure could be eased as as uh, restaurants are able to have greater capacity within their their specific locations. Uh, we are working on finding parking for one of the businesses on Merchants Row that feels that it has to have parking in front of their their location. Uh, we're working to find dedicated parking for them that is just as close to their business as the street parking is now. Um, but ultimately the decision would be the select boards and, and that we will bring for your approval at a future meeting. And, and the conversation is going on around the state because I got a phone call from Barry. The city of Barry was actually contemplating closing a chunk of Main Street to do exactly the same thing. So Waterbury was looking at something similar, but Waterbury's got a lot of construction going on. So they're trying to figure out where they can do it. Mm -hmm. So. Your proposal would close Merchant Row. Yes. Part of it. But it would give, so it would give those restaurants in that vicinity the opportunity to create this food court, but not only just them, but if there were other users. Um, so there's just some discussion about, you know, the businesses that are in uh, Sam's space that, you know, like the yoga place, you know, could they use that during the day at some period of time? So it could have, you know, some, some extra benefits by creating some of those, that open space, which is apparently where the requirements are going to come from. That, that's an outstanding right. idea. Um, I, that's very good. I think Fisher is probably the one that you've got to satisfy, right? Yeah, well, we, and, and that's that's the one. So we're, Josh has been working with them. Good. <laughs> Hope it works. Uh, I have one it. other thing I'd like to add to um, uh, Adolfo's comments, and it's relative to COVID-19 response. Uh, as, as the select board knows, I've been working with, uh, as has Adolfo, the Raman uh, Randolph Area Mutual Aid Network group. And I've been part of a sort of a uh, subset of that, a task force of that, uh, working with Gifford, with Ashley Lincoln, with uh, Marcus, uh, who's former uh, intern, a retired intern at Gifford, uh, Maury White, who's a surgeon up there, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Josh, who is the current uh, medical director, and Dan Bennett. We are coming up with a program to offer to uh, places of high public contact in the community, specifically employers that are currently open or as they reopen, free testing for employees on a rotating basis to identify potential points of outbreak in the community as COVID-19 picks up again upon reopening of the retail base uh, and the economic base. And uh, we're, we're beginning to roll this out over the course of the next week, but essentially it entails, um, uh, there are designated people at each employer designated by the state who are supposed to be training employees in COVID-19 protocols and documenting that. Those people would be our points of contact and, we w and Gifford is offering free uh, on-site testing at the Gifford site, drive-by testing on a rotating basis to any employees who wish to take act, uh, advantage of it uh, with the intent of identifying people who may be asymptomatic, that is carriers without knowing it because they don't have necessarily symptoms. Um, and we're beginning to roll out this program starting Monday. Uh, I'm gonna be speaking with Lane Durfee at Bethel Mills and Central Supplies, but we're targeting uh, major employers throughout the region and uh, 
we also want to offer it to town of randolph when town hall reopens to make it available to all town employees who may wish to avail themselves of free testing so uh, there will be uh, information about it in this week's Herald and in next week's Herald, and it's consistent with the states opening up testing to anyone who wants it now as well. I think that's also from what I understood on the Economic Development Committee meeting that that was also rolling out on Facebook and Front Porch Forum. Yeah, that's accurate. Would that be solely um, commercial people or would that- I think it's anybody from what Dan said this afternoon. Anybody? Yeah, it's anybody, but we happen to be, the Raman group happens to be focusing uh, specifically on high contact um, uh, places, uh, Central Supply, Shaw's, Kinney Drugs, Rite Aid, right. uh, the Barn, Cumberland Farms. Um, we're, we're really focusing on those entities that are either open now or might be reopening. But the larger story is that anyone can now go to Gifford and schedule an appointment to, for drive up testing per the State Department of Health uh, and the governor's announcements this week. There's also, there were discussion about um, <clears throat> inviting people who are coming to the campgrounds, transitioning up from South to encourage them to get tested. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Anything else? <laughs> you ready for that? Adjourned. There we go. Oh, I'm ready. I heard it. <laughs> Second. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Nicely done, Larry. Thank you for stepping in. Oh, good job. Pleasure. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Perry. Have a good week, weekend. See you all. Round. Hopefully it'll All warm right. up. Okay, okay, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Take care.